Hello, good morning. Welcome to Romero Threads, where it's all about embroidery. Let me just do a quick sound check here. We are finally live. I know I wasn't live last week. I was working, so. All right, we are good to go on the audio. We are finally live. Yep, good to go. All right, super excited to be here today. All right, we're going to talk about one of the most important things to do to your equipment in order for everything to be clean, sharp, and looking good when it comes time for embroidery. All right, so what I'm going to do real quick, uh, let me go back, let me shift this over, and um, let me go ahead, I'm gonna reset. I'm gonna reset my tensions. All right, so let me push this back right here. All right, what I'm going to do today, I'm just gonna go ahead, all my tensions up here. Let me see, so I'm right here. See, yeah, I'm right here. Uh, all my tensions, right? They're all dialed in perfect, right? But what I'm going to do, I'm just going to reset. All right, let's see if you can see me now. All right, there I am. All right, what I'm going to do, I'm gonna reset all my tensions, right? Something that if you have all your tensions perfectly dialed in, definitely something you don't wanna do, right? But for the whole purpose of science and getting our uh, tensions all dialed in, okay, we're gonna go ahead. I'm gonna take it all the way down. All right, I'm gonna take our tensions all the way down till it stops, right? Full tension, that means the thread is not gonna go anywhere if I were to leave it like this. Okay, so just real quick, take it all the way down. And my goal for today, and the goal for today's training is to actually reset and get a perfect, perfect tension test. Okay, so we're gonna start everything from ground zero. And I've had situations where where some of my tensions, they're all off, kind of like uh, one needle is way different than the other one. And sometimes what I do, I would just do a full reset on this here. All right, so this is kind of like worst case scenario, right? Somebody came into your shop and just resetted all your threads, right? It'd be like the end of the world because sometimes we have our stuff perfectly dialed in. All right, so all I did was bring all of our tensions all the way down. All right, so the goal for today is, all right, let me go back on camera. All right, uh, I was kind of blocking it right there. All right, so my goal for today, okay, and today's training is to, is to uh, reset our tensions. See, let me go full screen. Yep. All right. Uh, all right. All right. Looks like uh, everybody's coming in. All right. So all I did right now, I just reset it. All my tensions. All right. I put it down all the way to the lowest setting, to the tightest setting. Okay. And that's what our training is going to be based off today. All right. Our embroidery tension, how it is a push and pull. Okay. So one side, the top side. Okay. Uh, so on our picture here, let me see if I can make this picture a little bigger. I think this is a perfect representation of, uh, of what's happening with the bobbin, all right? So on the left side of this picture where somebody's pulling, okay, the left side, you see two hands pulling, okay? That is our top, our top thread. So we have two settings that we're setting. And then that right hand, okay, that's the bobbin. The bobbin has one tension pulling through. So what's happening here, okay, in a perfect world, this is how our bobbin will look like. And of course, we don't live in a perfect world, right? And uh, stuff happens and sometimes our bobbin starts acting up. Okay, so we're gonna talk about what do we have to do. All right, all right, uh, let me see. We're, uh, looks like we got slowly getting everybody in this morning. All right, uh, do some quick morning. Good mornings, good morning, Jelaine from Arlington, Texas. 
All right, Evelyn. All right, glad that you finally made it. All right, finally got to watch a live again. Yep, happy to have you. We have Arkansas in the house. Good morning, William. All right, Linda, good morning from Fort Worth. All right, all right, all right. We got Barb from North Central Minnesota. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, we got uh, we got Prosper, Texas. All right. So we have a lot of Texas in the house. All right. Oh, let's see. Bremerton, Washington. All right. Good morning, Marisa. And Donna, good morning. Al, good morning. All right, right. We got a lot of good mornings this morning. All right, right. Let me see. Bam, bam. Good morning, Gibson. All right. From Gibson from West Virginia. We got Georgia in the house. All right. Good morning, Heather. All right, all right, all right. Uh, did you say something to uh bam bam bam? Good morning. Helena, did, did you do something to Bobbin? Uh not oh not yet, not yet. We'll talk about the Bobbin right now. All right, from sunny South Florida, we have Elroy. All right, what up? Heart Hustle, Evans, Georgia. All right, nice to have you here. All right, and good morning, Juana from Maryland. All right, all right. So we got a good, good informational session today. Okay, so let me bring myself up. All right, so uh, today, okay, we're, we're talking about tension. We're definitely going to talk about how important the bobbin is, right? How important the bobbin is, how important uh, the tension. Because really, really, you could have everything dialed in good, right? You could have the perfect, you could have your uh, perfect uh, digitized design. You could have everything hooped up, garment ready to go, all right? But if your tension, all right, even like your bobbin, okay? And we're going to talk about all the little small details that will keep you from having clean, 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 bobbin area and all that stuff. All right. Uh, but definitely we're going to focus on this push pull or more of a pull, right? If we're having a pull, it's like a tug of war and we don't want anybody to win. We want it to be evenly always at all times, our top tension and our bobbin to be pulling evenly. All right. So let me see. Uh, let me start off with, uh, I got some good slides that I worked on this week. To kind of give you an overview that way when i'm going over it with my equipment all right so what i've done so far i reset my uh, my machine all my tensions i put them down all the way to the lowest setting so as tight as can be okay so that's what i did and let's go ahead let me bring up these slides right here all right let me turn off the gopro and then i'll turn it back on when we're ready to reset our bobbin or our tension. All right. Cool, cool. All right. So the plan for today, what I want to do, what I want to do is I want to go over kind of like the plan of what I'm going to talk about and then show you. Uh, we're going to run a, uh, we're going to measure how much force our bobbin has. And then we're going to actually run a uh, run an eye test. All right. So that's the plan for today. All right. So once again, I want to welcome everybody. Happy Saturday. All right. Saturdays are my favorite day because both work wise, uh, both work wise. OK, so both embroidery work wise, I can take as many I could I could be as efficient and have as many hours right in that day. And family wise, too. Right. So today we're actually going on a family trip. So right after this live, okay, my shop is closed for the weekend and we're taking a family trip. So it is a very, very, very happy Saturday. All right. I'm super excited to be here. I wasn't live last week and all right. And I felt like I had to be doing something. All right. Um, so I'm glad everybody's here. All right. So we got more. We got uh, Joni from Augusta, Georgia. All right. And we got Rob from Rochester, New York. All right, so we got we got uh pretty much a lot of from Texas, a lot of East Coast. All right, I'm thinking that all my West Coast people they're probably still asleep. All right, cause it's like 6 a.m. right, pretty early over there. All right, but if you're catching us on the on the replay, okay, always remember you could always leave questions or anything. You could also follow the chat 
I always leave the chat up here. I don't edit uh, in order to keep that the chat uh, visible. Uh, you cannot edit anything on the live. So I keep it the way it is from beginning to end. That way we could keep the chat. And that way, because uh, I know we have a lot of talent. We have a lot of talented uh, embroiders here on the chat. So if you want to, uh, anytime you want to add information, okay, or sometimes you might do something different than I do it. Okay, you can always leave whatever uh, suggestions you have on the chat. That way we can all learn from each other. All right. Uh, I actually have a question for the day. And my question for the day is, how often do you run a tension test? Okay, for example, an eye test. All right. How often, every when, do you run an eye test or a tension test? It could be an H test uh, or or some certain tension test for you to do, all right? Uh, I'll give you my answer in a bit, all right? But that's the main question for today. Uh, that way, everybody's gonna have different answers. That way we could kind of see uh, all the different ballpark uh, times and time frames that people have, all right? All right, we got T-Town shirts in the house. All right, good to see you, all right? Oh, we do got West Coast. All right, West Coast up. Good morning, Mark T. Good morning. All right, all right, all right. And then uh, I like to I I get like a random loose thread in a color after. All right, we'll we'll talk about all that. That's our main thing right there. Um. All right, all right. Yep, yep. I like this answer. When you go to the dentist, that's when you do it. All right. All right. All right. So let's go ahead. Let's talk about uh, running a tension test. OK, so this is kind of like the order that I like to go with uh, today. I'm doing the extreme where I'm resetting all my all my tensions. I'm putting them from ground zero. OK, I'm doing it from ground zero. Usually you wouldn't reset all your threads, but sometimes I've done that when when I just have threads all over the place, kind of like tensions all over the place, like one is sticking out more than the other one. All right. Sometimes you just got to start from scratch. All right. All right. Uh, Jelaine, never have. OK, if you have never ran an eye test, OK, you definitely, definitely eventually will have to run one. OK, eventually you have to run one. I know on my machine, the Recoma. Uh, they already come. They they already come. I tested and tension tested. So sometimes you can get away, right? We're going a a couple weeks, months, okay, without doing an eye test. But eventually, okay, eventually your tensions are gonna kind of uh, lose that uh, that nice sweet spot that it has, okay. And then eventually you gotta run, you gotta run uh, your tension test. All right, all right. Um, so today, what we're going to do, okay. We're going to talk about the bobbin tension. All right, I'm gonna pull out my favorite tool to uh, to measure my bobbin tension. And then we're going to talk about the upper tension, okay? And then we're gonna talk about the bobbin housing. And then finally, we're gonna run the tension test, all right? Because the tension test, it's like uh, the test. It's like going to uh, the mechanic shop and then running your diagnostics, right? It, it The eye test tells you how your machine is going to run. Okay, if your eye test does not pass, you might have some issues when you're running a project. All right, so usually, all right, usually you want to uh, run an eye test just to verify that your that your stitches and your and your uh, your tension are good to go. All right, so once again, question of the day. Okay, and we'll go over all everybody's answers. All right. Uh, as you can see, right, everybody's going to have different times, different situations, okay? Um, and then at the very end, I'll give you uh, every, every, I'll give you my answer of every when do we run eye tests, all right? All right, so this is the plan for today, okay? This is our, our, our main plan. Anytime something's acting up, this is what I do, okay? This is kind of what, this is, uh, I take three steps back because not your, your projects are not always going to run 100% good. Okay, sometimes you're going to have some type of hiccup. 
something's going to happen where something doesn't look good. Sometimes if you just have some random stitch that kind of pops out and everything else is looking good, okay, maybe your machine just had a minor hiccup. But once it, once it's once that problem becomes consistent and you start having uh, your stitches are not looking tight, now you want to kind of check this list here. Okay, so this is kind of like uh, what I revert to. So anytime something's not happening, I'm going to take two steps back and I'm going to start uh, checking, of course, my bobbin, right? So we'll talk about when I get to the machine, I'll kind of tell you my run through. I have like a mental checklist of what I do when something's not adding up or something's not looking sharp. All right. All right. All right. Analyzing our bobbin tension. Okay, so when we run our bobbin test, which we're going to do today, one of one of two things may happen. Okay, one of two things may happen. All right, I'm gonna pull it out. I'm gonna take out our stitches, and this is the backside of our stitches. All right, so if all the stitches, if we look at our, uh, if we look at our threads, our sand stitches, and all of our stitches, you can only see a little bit of bobbin. All right. That's a problem, okay? And what this is telling you, so here I wrote, this indicates that your bobbin is set too tight, okay? So it's like tying shoes, right? When you tie your shoe, right, your laces just kind of get all bunched up and tight, okay? That's the same thing with your bobbin. When your bobbin is too tight, okay, it's gonna, you're not gonna see too much of that bobbin coming out, all right? And the solution there is we're going to rotate since it's tight, we're going to loosen it up. So lefty loosey, we got to go counterclockwise. All right. And big thing here is when you make an adjustment on your bobbin, okay, which we're going to see the bobbin tension. When you make an adjustment on the bobbin, you're actually making, you're going to affect all the needles. All right. So if you're just trying to fix one needle, then you don't really want to touch your bobbin. Okay, so your bobbin is going to change all your needles, right? So if you're if, if you have all your stitches that only have a little bit of bobbin, okay, that's when you want to run when you want to make changes to your bobbin. Okay. Now on the bottom, if we run an eye test on the bottom, it says if all stitches have too much bobbin, all right, that means our bobbin is too loose. Uh, so same thing, same example like your shoes, right? If you don't tie your shoes tight enough. You're going to have your laces kind of loose. Same thing with the bobbin. If your bobbin is too loose, if it's not tight enough, you're going to have a lot, a lot of white thread down below. Okay. And what that can cause, okay, usually if you have bird nesting, right, we have, we see a lot of times in the, in the group forums where people are having issues with uh, uh, bird, bird nesting or, loop, or they're, they're looping right? The stitches on top are not looking tight. They're looking a little soft, saggy, and they're loopy, all right? Big indication is that the bobbin is loose, all right? So in this situation, we want to we want to tighten up our bobbin. So righty-tighty, we want to go right, okay? So same thing. This is going to have an effect on all of our needles, all right? And then next, okay, so after we run this eye test and we verify, okay, what we want to see is consistency, all right? We want all of our stitches to kind of have the same look. So if it's going to have the same too much, too much bobbin, we want all of them to have too much bobbin. That way we can make an adjustment with the bobbin, all right? Now, if we have individual, now, if everything is good to go, if all of our bobbins are good, and we have one or two stitches that are acting up that are not correct, okay? Then we're going to go individually. Now, now we take care of the top threads, the top portion of our threads. That's really where you wanna start touching your, uh, your tension knobs on the top, okay? So once we have individual threads that, that need a little bit of tweaking, okay? So in a perfect world, okay? So in a perfect world, it's gonna have one third bobbin one third to the left and one third one third to the right stitches okay perfect world okay of course we don't live in a perfect world right but uh acceptable is 20 percent to 80 percent within there okay perfect world 33 percent but if you have 20 percent or above you're good okay it, it might not be the best best 
uh, tension, but you can still get away with 20% or above or 80% and below. Okay. But once you drop down 20%, so you're pretty much only showing a little bit of bobbin, like a little tiny bit, or sometimes you don't even show bobbin, that can be a very, that can be an issue. Okay. And this situation is telling us that our top tension is loose. Okay. So this can lead to bird nesting. Okay. Because our red thread, the red color here, it's going to start getting jammed up inside our bobbin case and our bobbin housing. All right, so once again, so here, same thing, but we're tightening up on the top side, okay? So the solution is tying color red by rotating top tension clockwise, same thing, righty tighty, okay? So uh, once, once we get our bobbin kind of situated, you don't really wanna mess with the bobbin no more. Now we're kind of dealing with the top, the top tensions and the right, and the top tension. Okay, and same thing with 80% uh, bobbin or more. If you have too much bobbin on one specific needle, all right, that, that is telling us that our top tension is too tight. Okay, we want to loosen that red color or whatever color we have it set it at. So we want to go lefty loosey. All right, so we're going to see that. We're going to do that. We're going to actually do that in real time here. All right, so in the beginning, for those who just showed up, uh, for those who showed up late, Okay, what I did, I reset it, our tension knobs all the way down to the tightest, okay? So we're going to set all of our tensions from ground zero, all right? And then here, here, I have a chart of what to do, all right? So this is the game plan that we're going to do today. I'm going to have these, uh, I'm going to have these slides and these PDFs available for free download, so that way you can have it. Okay, you can accept, you can have it accessible, uh, just in case you ever have a situation. All right, and to tell you the truth, okay, some of some of this, like whether you go clockwise, whether you go counterclockwise, is it my bobbin or this? Sometimes, if I have a lot of stuff running through my mind, okay, uh, I kind of get confused with that too. Okay, sometimes I'm tightening up the top tension when I should really be loosening it up. Okay, so sometimes I got to take two steps back and by having this, um, having a cheat sheet like this, okay, tells you, kind of gives you a, a, a reference of what to do. All right. So number one, we're going to run an eye test and verify all our needles. And then we're going to, the second part, we're going to, we're going to fine tune individual needles. Okay. Until we get that perfect tension as number three. All right. So. That's kind of like what we're going to do today. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, let me go on our uh, other camera. Give me a second. Let me turn it on. So here I have the tools and items that I use when I set tensions. All right. Uh, just fix my. All right. All right, uh, let's see. Um, all right, we're good right here. Uh, let me shift over here. Actually, let me see. All right. All right, uh, let's get some of the answers. So the question of the day, how often do you run an eye test? All right, so as you can see, we got a lot of different answers here. And then I'll give you my answer in a bit. Let me pull some up. Uh, uh, Rob Jones, I don't run an eye test. I'm new to embroidery and I have, all right. So you definitely, we definitely eventually, okay. Eventually you're going to have to run an eye test. Okay, uh, very important just to make sure that your stitches are good to go. If you ever have an issue, you can always verify by running an eye test. I know a lot of machines, they already come fine-tuned, all right, ready to go. As soon as you push start, it's ready to go. But sometimes, all right, especially a big job where you don't want to risk it, okay. Um, and then William, I run a tension test every time I turn my machine on, okay. So we have from both spectrum, right? We have William that... He runs an eye test every time he turns on his machine to uh, others that 
have never ran an eye test, right? So we're going to have from both spectrums, okay? We're going to have from both spectrums, all right? Um, and then Bevy, I try to run an eye test at least once a month, but I do it more frequently if I'm using a lot or if I have frequent thread changes. Yeah, yeah, all right. And then Barb, we got Bob and Tess before each job. Tension H test weekly as part of weekly maintenance or if there are issues, all right? So you can always do an eye test. You can do an H test, right? Because an H test will give you uh, vertical and horizontal stitches. Okay, so you could kind of uh, what I've done also in the past. I've I've done the word fox because the word fox you get uh, vertical, horizontal, you get uh, circular, right? So you got your stat your your letter O going in different directions, and then your X for your diagonals. Okay, so uh, definitely. Uh, so Barb, after every job, before each job, right? All right, and then this is a very popular one, all right? I'm kind of like in this area too. When things start to mess up, right? When something's not looking right, now we got to verify and do some uh, investigation. And the best way to do investigation, okay, is to, is to go with an eye test, all right? And then Juana, I have never done an eye test since I got my recoma in October, so I want to learn it, but thanks for all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eventually, if it's October, so that's already what, like seven months. All right. So it's it's coming where you're going to have to run an eye test. OK, um, very good to know also. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, Bevy, I use the happy 15 needle. I have black, but I have black buttons, lower tensioners and white buttons. Upper. All right. Yeah, we probably have a lot of the common a lot of the equipment. OK. Uh, that's a good uh, that's a good point there. A lot of the equipment, even though we all have different equipment, okay, a lot of the the technology and the science of embroidery, all right, is it's pretty much all the same. Okay, it's a needle connecting with the bobbin and creating a lock stitch. All right, there's somebody's pulling up, somebody's pulling down, and you need to have that perfect tension. There are machines out there, okay, there are machines out there that do all this automatic tensioning. Okay, I've seen it at uh. At one of the conventions that I went to where I saw the Tajima, the automatic press presser foot, the automatic tensioner. Okay, it, it worked like a charm. Sometimes if something's not working right, because let's say your 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 anything automatic can always go down. Sometimes you have to override something. Okay, so it's always good to know the science behind uh tensions. Okay. So even though a machine can do it automatically, sometimes you have to override. Uh, something if it's not working out right. All right, right. All right. Good morning, Lejean from Western Wisconsin. All right. Um, and Bevy Jean, thank you for the cheat sheet. I always find it easier to find the quicker. All right. Yes. Let's talk about these cheat sheets. All right. Uh, one thing that my goal, okay, my goal for this year, all this information that we're kind of gathering every weekend, every Saturday, um, what I want to do. Okay, with all this stuff is actually pile it up and put it into like a book format. Okay, so a lot of times I do the cheat sheets. Okay, this is a lot of information that at the end of the year I want to pull all this information in and um, create a book out of it. All right, if that's something that you think would be very beneficial, let me know. Okay, let me know, especially uh, specific topics and items because me, I, I, I collect a lot of books. I like to reference items. I write a lot of notes. And anytime I have questions, okay, even though Google works uh, pretty good, right? YouTube works pretty good. Uh, nothing beats having your own notes, okay? Especially your condensed notes and having everything like the way you you remembered it. All right. So uh, that's kind of like on my to-do list for this year is gather all this information that we're learning and kind of put it in a book format. All right. All right, uh, this is a good question here. Uh, what's the difference between upper tension knobs? All right, yep, we're gonna talk about that right now. All right, so uh, when I re when I do this eye test, we're gonna we're gonna talk about that one. Thanks for reminding me. All right, and Barb, sign me up for the book. All right, yeah, yeah, book. All right, book will be great. All right, so that's the goal for this year. All right. Uh, all right, let's go ahead. Let's go to the to our table here. All right, let me see. Yeah, it's pretty good right there. Looks good. Okay. So here are my items, right, to run tension tests. 
Okay, of course. Okay, I got my Toa. I've had this for at least three years. All right, still keep it in the box just so uh, dust or any anything won't kind of get into it. All right, uh, Toya case. All right, so this here pretty much measures your force, right? So it has it in uh, milli new in force. Okay, so it's telling you how, many, how much force is that bobbin tension handling. All right, so let me move this to the side here. All right, so we have our bobbins here, okay? I get my bobbins from all stitch. All right, so just a quick recap, super quick recap. Okay, two kinds of bobbins, right? You always want to get L shaped, okay? L shaped bobbins. Don't get the M's. Okay, um, bobbin. So here, let me see. Uh, let me zoom in a bit. Let me focus. All right, so here, this bobbin here, it doesn't have any of the metal inside. Okay, let me see if this one does. All right, for example, this one here. All right, so this one has the spring inside. Okay, as you can see, so you have two types of bobbins. Let me see if we get a good view. Right? Yeah, we got a good view. So we got two bobbins, all right. Really, the this one without the springs. This is what I use for the magnetic with my magnetic bobbins. All right. So this is brand new. I just opened it up yesterday. Um a bunch here. Let me see if I still have. Yeah, one thing is when you get these magnetic ones, I would suggest buying two boxes, all right? Because out of nowhere, all right, we ran out of this one. And for some reason, I thought we were just out, okay? But I remember that I usually order two of everything. So lucky I had that one because I had this backup right here. And the way it is right now, right, shortage of everything, especially these magnetic bobbins. You, you definitely want to get more of everything. All right. So these, without the springs, is for our uh, magnetic bobbin. As you can see, it has the magnetic side here. So that's just attached here. And then you can hear that click. All right. Uh, these, the one with the springs, okay, they're used for... Uh, they were they're supposed to be used for the ones where you uh where you put the bobbin yourself with the metal the metal bobbins um i don't have an example right here but uh, i used to use these without a problem with these with the cardboard but what i saw what was happening sometimes okay sometimes the cardboard would kind of get attached to the springs and I wouldn't have consistent tension, okay? So that's why I kind of shifted. So for years, I've been using this one, the, the magnetic one, okay? These I still have just as backup, okay? Um, different type of bobbins, okay? You got uh, you got these that are just uh, car cardboard lists or paper lists, okay? They're just like this, all right? I've tried these. I'm not a big fan of these, okay? But we still got them just in case. Okay. And then you got your regular, uh, your paper. Okay. So for uh, for the longest, I was using these. Okay. They're still good. All right. But when I feel like once you go magnetic, okay, it's like it's hard to go back with, with anything else. All right. All right. So we got our bobbin here. Let's go ahead. Let me show you this, right? We just focus. Get my camera ready. Just check where. All right. Looking good. 
All right, this is step one when we're running our eye test, okay? So here, let me change my um, my focus. Okay, let me get focus right here. Okay, so we got to be real familiar with our bobbin. So we just placed our bobbin here. And when you pull your bobbin, should be rotating clockwise. Okay. Of course, we, we, the basics, right? Just pulling it through. And what happens here, when you pull it in between this bar right here, okay? So when you're pulling it through this bar, it's going through this spring here. Okay, so this spring is our bobbin tension. Okay, and that's being controlled by this screw here. Okay, let me see if I get a little pointer right here. Okay, so this screw here is controlling. All right, so the fate of your whole embroidery project, okay, I would say it comes down to this screw right here. Okay, it's kind of crazy that one little screw pretty much controls your project, your embroidery project, right? Even though there are about 20 other variables, right? This one here is usually the biggest problem with embroiders, okay? So this one here controls our bobbin, okay? And what we can do with our uh, gauge here Okay, all we do is put it in, right? Just like you're putting it in the regular housing. Click, you hear that click? Okay, so let me put that click again. All right, so it clicks. Okay, one thing that I wanna show you, when we're running this eye test, let me get a focus here. When we're running this eye test, do not put it in the bit in the pigtail yet. All right, just let it run with the tension. All right, so we put it back in. Hear that click. All right, now we put it under this pulley, over this pulley, and around. Okay, now here, now here is where the magic happens. Okay. Trying to block. Let me see. I know the light's shining bright. Let me see if I turn off this light. Just so we don't get that glare. All right. Yeah, this looks good right there. So now you could actually see the gauges. Let me see if I pull in. All right. You see that gauge? Now, when I pull this, okay, notice that gauge goes down. All right. So I'm pulling this, I'm pulling this bobbin thread, and it's telling me how much. How much tension is being forced, okay? How much that spring is putting on, all right? So right now, I'm reading, let's see if you could see it. I'm reading at above 150. Then it kind of goes down. It'll it'll kind of fluctuate depending how much how much you pull, okay? You just want to give it a, a nice consistent pull, all right? So I'm like close to 200. Okay, anywhere between 150 and 200. I would say here, uh, for flats, you might want to be like between 125 and 200. And this is this is measured in millinewtons. So how much force? Okay, millinewtons is how much force. Okay, so I'm right below 200, which I'm good. Okay, I usually like being on the on the upper side of 200. If I'm doing caps. Okay, caps has a different has a different uh, tension. I'm usually above anywhere from 225 and 250 for hats. Okay, 3D puff hats. All right, so you can see that. All right. And what I used to do when I had one one machine, I used to have one bobbin for flats and one bobbin for my hats. Okay. But now, now, now I have two machines, and I have one machine just for hats, one machine just for because it was a. Uh, what would happen? 
I would forget what bobbin was for which one. So sometimes I would mix my hat bobbin with my flat bobbin. All right. Let me see if uh, real quick. Let me just check the see if we have any questions here. All right. Oh, uh, bam, bam. All right. All right. We got TR Custom Apparel in the house. All right. Good morning. All right, all right. Good morning, Gracie. All right, then if, all right, all right. Uh, how much to, how much? Uh, and then, this is a good question right here. Uh, how much millimeter do L size have? All right. So the L size, it's it's the size of a, uh, of a nickel or a five cents here in, in the U.S., all right? Five cents in the U.S. Uh, so if you Google how many millimeters is a nickel, all right. Uh, and then a good question here, can I take the spring out? Okay. So if you do have a spring, you could easily take it out. All right. You just, uh, pull it out and it comes off easily. What I've noticed is usually if you, if you take it out, sometimes if you try to put it back in, it can cause problems. So I'd say if you're going to keep it, just keep it there. If you're going to take it out, just take it out. All right, right. And then uh, Barb, uh, never thought about the hat tension bobbin case having a, def yes, yes. That was one of my big things. Uh, as soon as I had my, my hat tension set at a different, okay, especially with 3D puffs, all right, it's like day and night, all right, big difference. All right, all right, let's continue with our bobbin, all right. Let me know if you have any questions about our bobbin. So right now, I'm good with our bobbin, okay. Usually. For some reason, every time I order from uh, All Stitch, usually my bobbins are good to go, like ready. Like after I uh, test them out, they're ready to go. But even though you buy them brand new, I, I, I still test my bobbin, right? Just so we don't have to take a chance. All right, once you're good here, this has a cutter right here. All right, so it cuts easy. And then if you're using this gauge, all you got to do is flip it upside down. All right, flip it upside down. And you got your bobbin here. Okay. So this bobbin is good to go. All right. I'm good to go. All right. Uh, there are some uh, seasoned embroiderers. Okay. That can just that do the hang test. All right. They, they, they. They could just pull it and tell you if that bobbin's good, okay? Or they could do the, the pull test, right? Like one inch. It should only be a half an inch coming down, okay? I I just I just go this way, all right? I like, uh, I like gadgets like this that kind of give you an exact or a very close to exact ballpoint, ballpark figure of how much force you got, okay? So if... If once you get to the point where you could kind of feel the tension, all right. Now, if you have to tighten it or make any adjustments, all right. We look at this this screw here. You have two screws. Okay, you have this one that's holding the tension screw, and then this bigger one. All right. So you want to change this bigger one here, the bigger screw here. And what I have here. Okay, what I have here, this is what I use, all right? So I have a driver kit, okay? I just wanna show you real quick, this cool kit. Uh, I've had this ever since uh, my uh, laptop repairing days. I, I used to uh, repair laptops and all cool stuff, create laptops. But I've kept this kit, okay? And as you can see, you have some very fine tips here, right here, all right? So if you got to change your bobbin, you're not struggling with a big old screw, okay? All right, you can easily make your changes here, all right? Then you have like different kinds. We have like a bigger one, all right? So you can find the one that's perfect, all right? And then we just keep these always handy. Okay, so I, I just always have this one handy. And I'm making micro adjustments. 
Okay, throughout the day, I'm making micro adjustments. If something's not looking good, something's not looking good, I'm making micro adjustments to my bobbin. Okay. Um, this screw kit, I do have an Amazon link, a shop of Romero Threads, Amazon uh, shop link where I put all the stuff that I have here in my shop. And you could you could just get that from Amazon. That's where I got it. All right, very useful. Uh, not just for not just for equipment wise, but you know, laptop and small electronic type stuff. All right, let's see. Bam, we got that. Let's go ahead. I'm gonna just hoop up our hoop. I'm gonna hoop up our um, our fabric right now, so we can run this eye test. All right. Um, just one thing that you want to do. Okay, you want to put it around the pigtail. All right. I know there's some people that say, "Hey, you don't have to put it around your pigtail." All right. Uh, I would. I I just do it the way something is supposed to work. That's the way I keep it. Okay. Unless somebody gives me a a very definite good reason not to put it through the pigtail. All right. But you want to put it through the pigtail. All right. So we'll put this to the side right here. Let's go ahead and let's hoop. Okay, so what I just did right now, by me setting that tension to the to the bobbin, okay, I would say is is one of the most important things in embroidery. Okay, usually if somebody's struggling with embroidery, okay, big reason can be they didn't set their uh, their bobbin tension correctly. Okay, so I have here is a piece of polo shirt. Okay, so. Uh, when I run an eye test, I like to match whatever garment I'm going to embroider on, all right? Especially if it's a big project, okay? If it's a big project, I'm definitely running an eye test, all right? Once we get into the big, big time stuff, okay, I'm not taking a chance. I'm not risking it. I'm going to run an eye test. That way, I just have a little bit more uh, reassurance that this job should stitch out pretty good. All right, man. Like always, want our stuff to be nice and flush, right? Okay. And this is giving me an accurate run because these are the polo shirts that we use. All right. These are the poor authority polo shirts that we use. So if an eye test runs good, okay, I have confidence that my stitches should come out good too. All right. All right. Uh, let me transition over. Let me just see real quick if we got any questions here. All right. We got Lynette. Good morning. Watching from Wilkes Bar, Pennsylvania. All right. I'm, uh, what type? What type of thread and size of needle do you most? So the most common needle here, Lee, uh, the thread. Uh, 40 weight, okay, 40 weight, that's probably like 95% of what we do here. Uh, 40 weight and then needle, 7511. 7511. So here, polo shirt, FFG is good. We're good with that. Then, um, Aldel, um, how much tension for a regular dad hat without puff? Uh, so hats, I would say you could go anywhere between 200 and 250. So I would say, uh, that hats without puff, okay. Um, you could probably you could probably go like 215, 220. Okay. Uh, and then here, what well, fabric do you use for eye test? Okay, so very important when you're doing eye test, you want to match, you want to match whatever fabric you're using. Okay, so here I'm doing it on a polo shirt because this is my uh this machine, we use it for flats. Okay, we use it for polo shirts. Okay, so I always want to match. You want to match the closest you can. All right. And then Bevy, uh, I used to do the drop test for my bobbins, but when I went to magnetic bobbin, it didn't work. I, I will keep different bobbin case for different tension needs. Buff. Yep, that's what I do. Exactly. For uh, my, my hat one. Okay, my hat one has one. Okay. Uh, made a big difference when I did that change right there. All right, so let's go ahead. Let's go to the equipment. 
So let me transition to the uh, GoPro right here. Give me one sec. All right. And what I did here, all right, let me just turn on these lights here. What I did here, I resetted my equipment. Okay, so in the begin in the beginning of the broadcast, I put our let me just see. All right, we're good to go. Yeah. Put some more light right here. All right, I think we're good here. Actually, let me give it a closer look. All right, I think we're good here. All right, we're good here. All right, uh, real quick, let me turn it on. So this is my this is my three year old Recoma machine. Okay, still running like a champ. Okay. Uh, so when I told my wife that I was going to reset the tensions, because she had these tensions perfect. Right. She always has it dialed in perfectly. And when I told her I was going to reset it, all right, I had to kind of convince her to let's reset it. All right. But all for science. Okay, so what I did, okay, I put this all the way down, so righty tighty, all the way down till these screws are sticking out. Okay, all the way down. All right, just to give it a reset. All right, these are all reset down. And let me just give you an overview, all right? Let me give you an overview. These tensions. These are your strong tensions right here. Okay, one, one spin here equals three spins down here on these bottom ones. Okay, so these are for big, big tension adjustments. These are for fine detail tension adjustments. But you want these two to kind of be leveled similar. So let's say, for example, needle number nine here. I have needle number nine here. Okay, so you want them to be kind of evenly screwed on, okay? And I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, now that I reset it, all of our tensions here, what I'm going to do, I want them to make them all flush and flat, okay? So right now I have this screw popping out, okay? Let's get a little zoom right here. Yeah, I think we got a good angle here. All right. You could see these, these little small uh, thread that I have right here. These are my 60 weight. Okay. And our 60 weight, we have to treat them a little different because they require different tension. All right. Um, all right, there we go. All right. So here, let me just, what do you want to do? Put them flat. And what, what I, I call this just resetting all your tensions and zeroing out, okay? Putting your tensions back to ground zero, okay? So all I'm doing, I'm making sure this screw, which is pointing out right now, I'm gonna put it back so it's flush with the knob, all right? Let me know if that makes sense, okay? But what I'm doing, I'm just putting this back to ground zero, okay? And there are tension tests for the top threads, okay? Which I don't use. And let me tell you why I don't use those tension, the tension tests for the, the for these is because everything's gonna revolve around the, the bobbin, right? So we already set our bobbin using our tension. So all of our adjustments, are gonna be based off whatever uh, tension we put on our bobbin. 
Okay, because it doesn't it doesn't uh, for me it doesn't make sense to measure the bottom bobbin and then measure this top part because here at this point it should give you a good ballpark figure of where we're at. Okay, so all this you want it to be flush. You don't you don't ever want these knobs. Okay, and there's gonna be times there's times for us when we have it kind of out of out of uh, the ordinary, but you don't want these screws to be super tight or super loose to the point where the screw here kind of shows up too much or gets lost all the way down. All right, you want them fairly close to flat. Okay, you want them fairly close here, but of course there are some tensions. There's some tension springs that kind of act up. I actually have a couple that I have to change on this one a bit that kind of act up. Okay, but I'll show you kind of like some stuff that you can do to kind of uh, compensate for springs that are acting up. All right. All right. So three th uh, two things that I've done so far. Okay, I've set my bobbin. Okay, I set my bobbin to uh, to about 200 uh, millinewtons force, right? And I've resetted our tensions where they're all flat right here. Okay, they're all flat up here. Flat, flat, everything's flat. Okay, nothing's sticking out and none of our screws are kind of hiding in here. Okay. So now... I can run our first eye test, okay? And then we'll talk about how I set up my eye test too, all right? And then down here below, let me kind of show you uh, bobbin area. Give me one sec. All right, now let's talk about the bobbin housing, okay? Even before doing anything, right? You always want to remove this guy here. And let's say you uh, your stitches are coming out all, all messed up, okay? What you want to do, you want to open up here. Not always the funnest part to uh, open because it's kind of in an odd location here. Okay, little small screws. All right, take out this one. Uh, what you want to do here, I know we do it kind of like weekly. This one here is remove this one, the needle plate. Okay, because you'll be surprised how much dust and thread and all sorts of crazy stuff you'll find right here, right? Just throw some. Then here, I got my little oil thingy right here, all right? I just throw one right on the blade. All right, nothing too crazy, all right? I'm just doing that right now because I haven't done that in a while, all right? But you want to make sure there's nothing here, right? That's going to create bird nesting or anything crazy, all right? Bring that back. And if I'm running an eye test, okay, uh, if I'm running an eye test, I'm doing this whole thing right here. Might as well, right? Might as well go all out and just clean up all this stuff. But usually, you don't want to forget about this area right here, all right? So it's just two screws. It's just two screws. All right, and then it slides off, okay? Uh, sometimes you can forget about this, the housing area right here, okay? But it can play a big role with your final outcome, all right? And then just take your time when you're closing it, okay? Just kind of in an awkward location or precision to screw it on, all right? 
And then I know some people have uh, useful tools, right? They have like a ratchet kind of, I just use it like this. All right, ready to run this eye test right here. Okay, now I'm gonna grab our bobbin that we just dialed in. Okay, what I like to do is have it neat, have it nicely on the pigtail. Okay, then just by pulling the pigtail, push it in, put this over. All right, and then push in. And you're gonna hear the click. All right, we're ready to go. Okay, cut this little line right here. All right, we're good there. Let's bring our hooped up fabric. And I have this file that I'm using. It has 24 different eyes, letter eyes. And I'll tell you why I have 24. All right, let's just do a trace. All right, so 24, it has uh, 12 on top, 12 on bottom, and it fits uh, It fits a 5.5 pretty good. But the reason why I like to go 12, all right, let me see if I could tell you. Uh, well, I'll tell you right now. Let me just start this. Uh, let me set the colors. Uh, two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And then I'll go again. Um, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 12, 11. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15. All right. And let's go all automatic. Okay. And uh, needle one, I don't have it threaded, so I'm going to skip that one, okay? But I'm going from 2 to 15. All right, uh, let's go and... All right, this first one, that's the color white, but you probably won't see it that good. All right, hold on. All right, it's a little bright. Let me see. So right now, I haven't done any fine adjustments. All right, we're gonna let this run. We'll watch it from right here. All right, uh, let's see. Um, All right, this is a good idea, Bevy. Uh, maybe mark the cases with a marker. Yeah, so we used to uh, mark our bobbins, which is which, but they, I don't know, they either the permanent marker or something kind of would fade away and it would go away. All right, uh, three years old, looks like it was delivered yesterday. Yeah, we keep it, we keep it pretty clean. We keep it pretty clean. Uh, can I? What is this? Why can't I just do this uh, screw from beginning? All right. All right. Uh, so here, let me just tell you that uh, we have, I have 24 uh, eyes on this file. Okay. And that's so I could run, I do 15 needles. Okay. Usually, usually when I do 15 needles, there's, there's probably some that are good. So I don't have to make adjustments to some. Okay. So that'll leave me with 15, nine. So that way I do adjustments on maybe nine uh, needles. I'll do I'll do adjustments on nine needles and then I could just change, uh, put the colors accordingly. All right, so right now this file has 24 eye tests. So at letter 16 or 15, I'll stop it and then we'll analyze it. We'll take it to the camera and then we'll analyze it. All right.
and let me see. So let me give you the description of this eye test here. Um, let's go to the, while well, we're waiting for this to sew up real quick. All right, we're here on the wheel comp. All right. Uh, this is this is how my file looks like. All right. So let's see. On the right, I'm all about looking at at the info. Okay. Uh, let me see. We have 24 stops, 24 trims, right? Because there's 24 colors, and total stitches 6,300. All right. Even though there's 6,300 stitches. Okay, very useful. Um, very, very well uh, investment in doing these 6,000 stitches if you have a big project, right? You want to make sure you get it. All right, uh, let's see. Here, I like to start. So as you can see here, this circle on the software, this, this circle is telling me where that needle first starts. Okay, where does my stitches start? I like to start. Usually, I like to start all my uh, designs at somewhere, uh, not on the sides. That way, if you get like a long tail or a thread that kind of uh, had a minor hiccup during the tie-in, okay, it'll it'll get tying up with the stitches on top. Okay, but we got a starting here, ended here. I have a just a center run and a zigzag underlay. All right. Um, so I have this one. I also use a six. If I wanna, if I wanna just verify, let's say uh, two or three needles, I'll just use something like this, like a six uh, eye test, right? And then let's see the category uh, here. If you look down below at the size, the height is one inch. Okay. So each one of my eye tests, one inch, which is all right, pretty much what you just need. Uh, you don't have, you don't need to go all out with a big design. And then the width, okay, which is very important. That way you could see the 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 satin, you can see the bobbin. I like to put a 5.5 millimeter width. Okay. So just kind of give you a reference. So when we're analyzing our stitches, we could see. Uh, how it's going. All right. Uh, let me know if you have any questions on the eye test. Also, to run an eye test, all you have to do, all right, so just just go to your uh, just go to your lettering. And it's like you writing on uh, somebody's name, right? You're just gonna write the letter I, capital I, block, okay, block two is usually uh, all you need. Right, then you have the I, and then you put the characteristics right here. Okay, so you could say I want it uh, US height one millimeter. Okay, and then width 5.5. 5.5. All right, and then US, okay. So even if you don't have, if I'll put this, I'll put an eye test up for free download, but you can always create your own. And then underlay, you could just put a uh, center run, by segment, center run, and then just a zigzag right there. All right, so when you run it, okay. Very simple, okay. Then you could adjust your start stops and all that stuff, all right. All right, let's see. All right, so it's running the eye test right now. And All right, so for those who are just joining us right now, we are running an eye test. Okay, we're running an eye test on our on our machines. We're testing our what we're doing is we're testing our attention, okay? So I've done two things. I've set our bobbin 
to 200 on the TOA. Okay, and then one thing about the TOA, uh, the the machine that I uh, the the tool that I use to um, to check our tension on the bobbin. Okay, there is a digital. Okay, there is a digital version of what I did. Okay, I've been good with this one, with just the regular um, mechanical one. Okay. All right. Uh, I know the digital one, it's probably like a hundred bucks or double in price. I think this one, the TOA, I, when I got it, it was like 40 or 50 bucks, something like that. Okay, maybe 60 bucks. Um, but there is a digital version. Okay, so if you want to try that out, you could, but I'm good with just that one. All right. Um, let me, usually when I'm looking at this first round of eye tests, I'm kind of observing it. I'm like real close. Because we haven't dialed anything in top wise, okay? We just put it back to normal, to flat. So all of my tensions right now on my top, all I've done was put them flat with the screw. This is needle 15. So after this, I'm going to stop it. Okay. So this is my last needle 15. All right. So I stopped it here. Now let's go ahead. Let's take it to the table and analyze. Okay. So this is the part where we have to analyze our findings. All right. So let me cut to. All right, we're gonna have to zoom in, super zoom in on this one. All right, make sure we're good. All right, see how we're looking like? All right, so this is our, this is how we're looking so far, all right? And as you can see, some of them look pretty decent, okay? This is us not doing anything special, right? Anything special on the top. What we've done, we've done everything special on the bobbin, but we put everything flat on the top tensions. All right. I'm just going to cut these out just so we could see them a little better. All right. Not very necessary, but just so you could kind of get a better view. All right, so we could take them one one at a time right here. All right, let me see if I get a marker to label some of this stuff. All right, so this here, let's see. Uh, we started here, so this was needle two. Okay, so needle one, I, I I don't even have it threaded, so I just skipped that one. So this is two, three, four, two, three, okay, three. Let's see if I can. All right, three, right? Little bit of bobbin, all right? So if you're following on our cheat sheet, okay, we have to uh, tying up, right? Tying. So I'm going to put T for tying up. All right. Here, I got to loosen up. All right, here, loosen. Here, tying up. This black looks pretty good. Okay, pretty good. This blue looks pretty good. This silver, pretty good. This black, uh, I will say loosen a bit. Okay, loosen a tad bit. Uh, this one, we have to loosen it. It's a four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 10, 11, 12, 13. All right, you can't really see the white too good, but I'm going to say a lot of bobbin showing, so I want to loosen the top thread. This is all adjustments on the top thread, on the top tension. 
So since all my bobbin, okay, is fairly uh, consistent, I don't want to make any changes on my bobbin. My bobbin is good to go, all right? If it was showing too much on all of them, then I might have uh, adjusted the, the bobbin, okay? Uh, this one, I'm going to loosen, loosen. This one's perfect. This one's like the perfect 33% which is not always uh, common, right? Usually you're gonna see it one way or another. Okay, so this is perfect. Okay, these are perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, this gold, perfect. Okay, so a lot of them, they're just little, small, tiny, adjust, this white one's perfect, I'll take that one. All right, so I'm gonna make these adjustments. Let's go back to the GoPro. And then uh, let me know if you have any questions of what I'm talking about right here. All right. Um, all right. So now I'm back. Okay. Now I'm back. And now I made my notes right here to tell me what to do. All right. So on needle two, I got that perfect. So I could leave that alone. Uh, number three little bit of bobbin so i gotta tighten it up okay so i'm gonna go um let me show you up here all right so up here okay so once again these top ones i'm all the way in the top okay you see all the way in the top here one spin of these equals three of these okay so for big adjustments you're going up here okay but what I usually do, I'm gonna on the top on three. So I'm, I made a label, tighten it up. I'm gonna go one, two here, and then here on on two, two, three. You kind of want them to be kind of similar to each other, okay? And then I have on. Two, three. Oh, that was three. Three, all right, two, three, three, two, three, one, two, three. Tie in, okay, so tie in, you're going righty tighty. Okay, and then number four, we're loosening it up, so it's a little loose, four. Okay, so left to loosey, two, going two there, going two there. Okay, loosen three here, or actually four here. I just want them to kind of be similar to each other. All right, and then five, this one, number five, red is five, loosen it up a tad bit. This is just minor tweaks, okay? It's like almost perfect, but all right, number six, this is my goal. This is uh, number six here is the one that I feel that my tension, I need, a, I need to put a new tension, okay? But I'm gonna tighten it up. I, this one I have to, I already know I got to tighten this one a lot. Okay, this is like my, my special, my special needle. Okay, I know all of us have that special needle where we, we already know we got to take special care when we get to this needle. All right, so I put, I put that one fairly tight. Uh, seven, good, eight, nine, ten. I'm saying ten, loosen it up. 10, loosen, so I'm going to two, and then 10, 10, 11, all right, 11, loosen, so a lot of these I'm just loosening it up, 11, all right, really, these are all good to go, all right, but right now we're just dialing them in, so my initial, just putting it flat, setting our bobbin, all right, pretty much took me close to perfect. All right, but right now we're just fine tuning. 13, loosen, okay. And then I have them labeled up here. I label them. I still haven't labeled my, my newer machine, but this one, so it makes it a whole lot easier. And then uh, 14 is good, 15, loosen up a bit, okay. All right, cool. Now we put it back. Okay, but let me set the colors. Okay, so I want to change. 
just the ones that I made a little note to it. So I'm here. I'm going to put three, four, five, six, seven. No, three, four, five, six, four, five, six. And then seven, eight, nine is good. Then 10, 11, 10, 11, 12 is good. 13, 15, 13, 15. And then from there, I'll just put it back to two and three. All right, okay. All right, put this back on. And then we're gonna complete this eye test. All right. So really, it set me good into a good location. All right. Uh, push start here and let's continue. All right, I'm just gonna let it run now. All right, um, let's see. Uh, let's go, Bevy. Thank you, Romero, for this class. I've been working backwards, always adjusting the top tension first. And also, okay, yes, very good, right? So um, that's what I did too, right? I, I used to do the same thing too. But we always start bobbing first because the world revolves around the bobbin, all right? When we are embroidering, okay, the bobbin is like the superstar of our equipment. All right, even though it's the smallest item, one of the smallest items, it controls pretty much all the needles, right? All the needles are 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 affected by the bobbin. Okay, so we always start with the bobbin, and then any of our needles that need tweaking, we're gonna tweak them individually. All right. Uh, and then uh, Elroy, here's a question I know a little, but how do you set the color white to a needle? I can't find that color. Uh, I don't even have my colors set to the proper color. Uh, I've done it when I first got my machine, but then you, you're constantly changing colors on your machine that if you try to keep up with matching the colors on your machine, I mean, it's too much for me. So I, I don't even uh, I, I don't even match up the colors, the proper colors on the machine because it, it only matters what needle are you using. And what needle do you have it there? Okay. And then, um, Alina, where do you oil your needles? I don't oil my needles. All right. You don't have to oil your needles. Uh, your bobbin is the bobbin housing is what you know. Uh, but I don't see why you should be why it should be oiled in above. Oh, the above the needles? Yeah, those red dots. So you see right under those numbers, there's those little red circles. Okay. You got to needle those areas too. Or you can move that case. You can move that flat case and put them uh, individually right there. There is no parts, just needles. Yeah, there's those springs. And then on the bottom of those springs, there's like these little felt pads. The, those are what's, what's supposed to absorb the, the oil. But yeah, you're not, you're, not, you're not really oiling the needle. You're more oiling the the springs that are in there all right and then jelaine appreciate that all right much appreciated all right and then elroy said it looks great to me yeah the eye tests look great right but now while we're doing it we're just doing minor tweaks all right minor little all right we're doing those little minor tweaks in order to kind of uh bring everything close to perfect all right so we'll never achieve perfect but we want to get close to perfect. And then uh, SL paper digital is a hundred bucks on all stitch. All right. So for those who want to go digital on the TOA, okay, uh, I'm good with this with just the regular one. So as you as you see, the regular uh, the mechanical TOA uh, tension gauge, okay, it it pretty much brought me to like ninety percent, okay, ninety percent perfect. Right now I'm trying to bring it up to like ninety five percent. All right. Uh, the Elroy, I'd rather have Romero come to the shop and do it. Yep, yep. I mean, you saw how I did it, right? You saw how I did it. I didn't do anything special. 
right? I literally did not do anything special. I just reset it. So two things that I did, right? Today, I set the Bob intention to 200. And then I reset all of the tensions on top just so it could be flat. Okay, so nothing special. All right. So trust me, you try it. If you could try it today, and I'm pretty sure you should be able to knock that out. All right. And then TR Custom. All right. Thank you, Romero. I'll be adjusting both my machine this week. I'm also going to dedicate the second bob in forehead. Yeah, try that out. Try that out. Let me know how it works out for you. All right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I have, I, I have my, uh, I didn't touch my, uh, I, this one here, all right, this one here, my flat, I feel like flat, very easy to dial in. My 3D puff, so my machine that's right next to it, I wouldn't want to mess with that, all right. And I don't think my wife would let me mess with that, with that tension because that one dialed in, everything's perfect, all right, perfect, perfect. All right, then Alina, appreciate that, much appreciated. All right, so it's completing the, the eye test right now. And I was gonna do the last two. All right, it's gonna do the last two. Usually I would have stopped it and see if there's any last two, last two uh, stitches that need to get adjusted, but I'm just gonna let it run. And then we'll look at the, the, the we'll look at it right here. All right, um, so when we're doing this, uh, when we're doing this eye test, okay, when we're doing this eye test, oh, so, to go back to answer our question of the day, all right, so let me go ahead and answer my question. Question of the day, how often do you run a tension test? All right, believe it or not, believe it or not, okay, we, ha we haven't ran a tension test on this machine. Uh, I would say at least, definitely we haven't ran one this year, okay, so we're already on in may so i would say november or december was the last time we ran a tension test on this one okay and i'll tell you why okay i'll tell you why usually like the like earlier right somebody had comment that they only run an eye test when something goes bad all right i'm kind of like in that category all right when something's not adding up all right now I'm, now i'm verifying checking stuff all right but when stuff is working i just keep it as it is if something, if we have to do minor tweaks, all right, I know that I can do um, individual uh, changes on our knobs, all right, on the right, left, all right. Ideally, okay, ideally, you would want to run a, an eye test uh, monthly or after every big uh, project. Also, another reason why we haven't done it, because this one pretty much does a lot of the same garments, all right, we do, we do, uh, Polos and beanies, which kind of have the same tension, all right, same ballpark uh, area. Now, if I were to change, okay, if you were to change from garment to garment, so if I were to be working on polo shirts and then shift over to like uh, backpacks or something like that, then I might want to run an, an eye test. But really, this machine, this flat one, okay, uh, primarily polo shirts, all right, primarily polo shirts. If something's acting up, then I might I might do something, and even um, even like different type of material polo shirts. Okay, if we go with the very uh, thin type versus the more thicker cotton type, uh, it's still usually same ballpark figure of um, tension. All right, now that's on this machine, right? On this machine. Okay, now on the hat one, yeah, we've ran. I've ran. I would say uh, at least every month and a half. On our other one, our other machine. So stuff could change, right? And um, and I do an eye test on our hats. All right. So this is good things to know. Also, is that on our hats, I'll do an eye test on foam. Okay. So I'll run an eye test using foam. So instead of using the regular eye test, I use an eye test specifically made for foam. So I have. Let me see if I could pull one out here. I have hats that I use just for a foam test. All right. Oh yeah. Right here. All right. So good thing that I remember right here. All right. So this was a foam test. See.
we do an eye test using hats. So this was, uh, so like the question earlier today, right? Tension on dat hats, flats that are not, that are not uh, 3D puff. So this is a dat hat that's not 3D puff. Okay, so same thing, we run eye test on hats too, all right? Sometimes that, sometimes that just requires you to sacrifice hats, right? These are some of the free hats, right? So usually my machine comes with free hats or if I can find a cheap uh, hat somewhere, I'll buy it and I'll just, I know I'm gonna use it for uh, eye tests, okay? So my hats, I probably do more eye tests on my hat machine than I do on my flats. All right, all right, so. All right, all right, all right. So let's go ahead, let's look at our final, our final product, okay? I'm just gonna keep this, uh, I'm gonna keep the GoPro because my other camera's dying. Oh, so if I can get you a good view. All right, we're good right there. We take out the hoop. Go bigger screen right here. We'll get you a good view. I think we're good here. All right. Uh, let's see things to look out for. So these are our new ones that we did. All right. So this was the first one. So big improvement. So here, right, a lot, a, a little bit of bobbin, made that adjustment. Okay, now it's now I probably went too much. Okay, now it's showing uh, more bobbin than expected. So I can make that minor tweak. Okay, this is where we're doing little tweaks just to get down to perfection. All right, but really this is good. Okay, this is perfect. Okay, but if we want to just tweak it a little bit, I would go down to the bottom to the middle ones. Middle tension, this blue one, okay, dialed in perfectly. Red one, perfect. Okay, now this this gold, remember the one I told you that is like our little problem child needle? Okay, we got it looking good here. All right. Black, bam, we got it perfect now. Okay, nailed it down perfect. Gray, bam, black. Okay, so this black one, yep, we got it looking good. Okay, also, the most important thing, right? So this is good, being good here, but you also want to look good here on the actual stitches, all right? So you want to kind of move it to the side, make sure everything's flat, ready to go. All right, so let me just give you one last bit of information right here, okay? Because I think this is very important right here. If you're getting your, if your, uh, if your eye test is looking very choppy, okay, very choppy here, what you might want to do, you want to always make sure your bobbin housing is cleaned, especially this area right here, okay, where your thread comes in. This little space is like a slit, okay. That little slit is where your thread travels, okay. If you ever want to clean it course right get a cardstock just clean that out because sometimes you can you can have lint and something that's obstructing it okay what you want to do is remove all possible tension and anything that'll prevent it from sliding through smooth okay okay so let me see let me know what you think okay so I'm gonna give you my my honest thoughts right here, all right? Which is kind of important. Okay, let me shift over to this camera. Uh, all right, let me give you my honest thoughts right now, okay? Uh, here, okay, here I kind of, sometimes even when I go back 
and I look at the videos, sometimes I, I think like sometimes it might look easy, okay? Like stuff may, might look easy, okay? Um, sometimes I like, I want to show something going wrong. So, you know, you, I could kind of show you ways to, to kind of overcome issues, all right? Here, everything worked out good. Everything's very just straightforward, okay? I know when I started, when I started embroidery, not everything was perfect, all right? Not everything was working out the way it works now, okay? But I can honestly say, especially if you're brand new in embroidery, the more you practice, the more you understand how everything works, all the science behind embroidery, the easier it gets. So if you get frustrated, all right, if you get frustrated that your, your items aren't coming out, right, the way you see it on TV or the way you see it on YouTube, okay, it's just a matter of time where everything just starts clicking. All right. And the more you the more you specialize, especially if you specialize in a in a specific garment. OK. I would say if you're starting out, choose your favorite three garments and master those three garments before kind of offering everything to the world. All right. So for us here at our shop, OK, polo shirt, beanies, hats. OK, beanie season kind of is kind of right on hold. Hats, big thing right now, right? So when I learned here, when I learned embroidery, my goal was I want to learn everything there is about polo shirts. I want to learn everything there is about hats. And beanies is pretty straightforward, right? There, there's not too much different options for beanies. But for hats, right, there's an unlimited information on hats, unlimited information on polo shirts. Okay, so I would say is the more you do your eye test, the more you understand how tensions work, and always having handy all these cheat sheets, right? Whether it's a cheat sheet that I offer here or any cheat sheet that you see online, okay? Always use that, understand that, and keep it handy because you might need it one day, okay? You might need it, you might not need it that day, but you will need it eventually, okay? So let, let me uh, check out some questions here. All right, um, I was afraid from the test. Now I'll be ready. Yeah, yeah, so you see, it's just an eye test, right? It's not gonna do anything. Like your machine's not gonna act funny. And I, the letter I is the easiest letter in the alphabet, right? Out of all the letters, the letter I is the most easiest to digitize, to stitch. So you cannot hurt, you cannot hurt your equipment by doing an eye test, okay? You can only learn from doing an eye test, all right? And then um, the digital does bobbin ant. All right, that's good to know. Thank you, SL paper. Uh, that's good to know, all right? But like I said, I don't really check my top tension because I set it flat because that's where I want it. You you always want your, your tensions to be as flat and as flush with the screw as possible, okay? There's going to be times where your screws are going to be all over, like, all over the place, and that's when I would do a reset. Uh, let me see. Is the eye test on hats, like, flats or different digital? Yeah, it's different. Is, uh, if you're doing an eye test with puff, okay, if you do puff, I would highly recommend you doing an eye test with the letter I digitized for puff. Okay. It'll it'll make your whole it'll make everything look a whole lot better. All right. And then I have a Recoma 1501 and I did it when I got it last May because I was having issue. I got a buy machine this year and have not had to do it. Yeah. So yeah, sometimes sometimes it'll it'll probably be dialed in perfect. All right. My machines, I've every time I've got it. I've got it uh, pretty good. So, but sometimes if you if you received it good, then you might expect it to always be good. But it's always good to learn. I would go back if you do if you still have the Recoma 1501. If you still have it, I would just say just to do a, a full reset on the eye test, and there should be no reason why why you you cannot bring it back um, into proper working conditions. All right. All right, Sidar, appreciate that. All right. Uh, well, appreciate it. All right, looks good. All right, Alina, looks good. All right. Uh, let's see. I did a test stitch on digitized logo on two pieces of cutaway in the small fonts. I could see some of the bobbin. Is that bob? Okay, very good. Uh, thank you for this question. If bobbin is showing up on your tension, that means, okay, if it's only one needle, then that means your top tension is too loose. Wait, no, too tight. Sorry about that. Uh, 
your top tension is too tight. It's pulling. So just think of like your top tension is pulling. It's pulling that that bobbin onto the uh, onto on top. So you want to let go. You want to loosen up the the tension. Okay. So that cheat sheet. Okay. So this is where that cheat sheet right here comes handy. All right. So here where it says too much bobbin. If it's too much bobbin, so that bobbin is going to show up on the top, and this indicates that your top tension is too tight. All right. Solution is to turn your top tension knob counterclockwise, lefty loose. You got to loosen it up. All right. So this is where that tension cheat sheet comes handy. All right. Just match your eye test to whatever's showing up here and then make that adjustment there. All right. Um, all right. Uh, Bevy, do you have a different test for your puff hats? Uh, yes, I have one. I have to find it. Okay. I haven't ran it in a while. Okay. So today, okay, today I'm going to post this one that I have available right now. But if I find it, I'll, I'll post the, I'll post the eye test that I have for this one right here. All right. So I got this. All right. Um, Kingsbury class. Appreciate that. And yes, Jelaine, we'll we'll end it with this. All right. If if you learned something today, all right. If you enjoyed the the today's uh, training session, I think it was a real good one. Uh, this is something that I still always have to go back and like like just like you saw right now, right? When like my brain was working, trying to figure out is it right, is it left? Okay. Um, this information will never go out of style. I test is here forever. If you're an embroiderer, this is something that you will do forever and ever and ever and ever. All right. And it's just something that we're going to constantly work on and constantly. You're going to see this always in the group uh, forums. All right. People having issue. And usually the solution is run an eye test, get your tension straightened out, fix up your bobbin. OK, then you're back. You're back in the fight. All right. So if you found value today, OK, if you learned something today, uh, make sure you hit that like. OK, make sure you hit that like. And let me take out this banner. All right. Appreciate everybody for stopping by. All right. Uh, if, if for those on the replay, if you have any questions, any comments, leave them down below. All right. Uh, and for everybody else, I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.